Welcome to North Place Church. Yes. We are so glad that you're here today from wherever you're joining us. We want to say thank you so much for being with us today. And it's yes. it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, isn't it? Is. It? it is. It's cold outside. Cold outside. I had to, de- I had to scrape off my windshield this morning. <laughs> yeah. It's cold. Yeah. But hey, we are glad that you're here this morning. We're live here with you today from our Saxe campus. Mm-hmm. And just excited for all that God's going to do today here at our services and glad that you're a part. Yeah, for sure. And if this is your first time here, Welcome. Yes. And we would love to connect with you. So you can scan the QR code or click the link in the chat to fill out a connection card because we want to connect with you. We want to build community. And that's how we do it here at North Place at the online campus. So make sure to fill out that connection card so we can get to know you and so we can send a gift your way. Absolutely. We want to connect with you and live in community with you because we know life is better Mm -hmm. surrounded by people and in community. So we want to be that for you and you for us. Well, today we're continuing our Advent series here at North Place Church, and it's, it's a series that we've titled Ever Present. Today, Pastor Brian will be leaning in to the present component, the present aspect of God's uh, goodness, of God's mm-hmm. grace, and, and just his character and who he is. And so I'm really excited for that. So make sure you stick around for that coming up in just a little bit later. But before, we wanted to have a little bit of fun, we wanted to play a game of, of Christmas this or that and we want to we want to hear from you as well but to start things off Bree, yes. let us know okay this is a christmas this or that so which one do you prefer okay do you prefer a a christmas with snow or no snow i think on christmas snow okay it feels like christmas right right, right right yeah okay. that makes sense okay yeah. me i'm a, i agree i agree all right when you're decorating for christmas okay white lights or colored lights um i think i like white Okay. It's classic. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it's classy. Yeah. yeah. It's classy. I like it yeah. too. I, I'm a white lights kind of person. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ice skating or sledding? Mm, ice skating. Ice skating. I love ice skating. Uh, me and my fiance went ice skating on Friday night. So much Aww, fun. That's I love so fun. ice skating. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm not very good, but I do, uh, it's a good <laughs> it's okay. time though. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. A couple more. 
Would you, when you're buying your gifts, do you want to shop online or shop in person? I think in person because I want to see it, I want to touch it, and I want to get it right then. Right. Okay. So that makes sense. I, I agree. I will admit, though, every single one of my gifts I bought this year was online. Oh. So I... I but I see the appeal. Yeah, it's you know. convenience. I yeah. don't know. You know, it's one of those <laughs> things. Okay, well, last one. Elf or Home Alone? Mm, I love both of those, but probably Elf. Elf. Yes. I'm in agreement. I love Buddy. Yes. He's so He's great. hard to beat. He's he hard is. to beat. Okay, well, we want to hear from you. Let us know. Do you buy a Christmas tree, uh, a, a, a natural one, an outside one, or do you have a fake tree? So real tree or fake tree? Let us know in the chat. What do you guys do? Real tree or fake tree. Yeah. Well, today I wanted to remind you quickly that at the end of service day, we will be partaking in communion. And so if you have the elements there at your house or wherever you're joining us from, go ahead and prepare those. We'll be taking communion together as a church family at the end of service today. Yeah, for sure. And if while you're watching today, we want to hear what is on your heart. Yes. What, is, what is the Lord speaking to you? So interact in the chat. We have hosts that will be interacting with you. So let us know what in, are you taking away from the sermon? What in worship speaks to you? Let us know because we want to interact with you today. Yes, we do. We want to live connected with yeah. you in the chat today. So go ahead and do that. Well, right now we're going into a time of worship. So I want to encourage you, do whatever you need to do to prepare your hearts for this time of worship today. Let's go ahead and join in worship right now. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Let's stand on our feet this morning. Let's sing to the world. The Lord has come. Come on. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And
We're so glad you're here this morning. We have come to celebrate Jesus and lift him up in this place. He is holy, righteous. Come on.
You know, we're singing with the angels when we sing that song. They're gathered around the throne of heaven singing, holy, 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 worthy, 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 glory and honor and power is his name. Father, we join heaven's song today. On this last Sunday of Advent, before we come in this room with candlelight, Christmas Eve moments, sacred, solemn moments on that silent night, holy night, our hearts are expectant today as we lean into the Advent love that has been bestowed upon us. We've come to celebrate you today, and we join the heaven song, the angel song today, and bring worth and glory and honor and power to your name. I pray, Lord, that you would come close today. I know you're always here, so I ask you to remove every barrier that would inhibit us from sensing the nearness of your presence and that as we worship that you would inhabit and take up residence in the praise of your people today. May we be marked and forever changed because of the realness of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You may be seated today. We're going to. Good morning again and welcome to North Place Church. If you joined us during worship, wasn't that a great moment of worship? Great opportunity to just pause in the middle of our work, uh, in the middle of our busyness of this time of year and just praise and worship our God. So thank you for being a part of that. I'm glad that you joined us in that today. And we just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for being here at North Place Church. Yeah, and we want to shout out a few people that we noticed were in the chat. So Pamela from Arkansas, thank you for joining us. I'm from Arkansas. You're from Arkansas. I grew up in Arkansas, so it's so good to see an Arkansas face. Let's go. In the chat. In the chat. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Thank you for connecting with us, Pamela. Hey, and James joining us from North Carolina today. Thank you so much for being with us all the way from the East Coast. We love that you're here joining with us today. Thank you so much for being with us today, James. Yes, so thankful that you guys joined us. And if it's your first time today joining us, if you joined during worship, welcome. You can scan uh, the QR code or click the link in the chat to fill out a connection card because we want to connect with you. We want to get to know you. We We want to put a gift in your hand, but we just want to build community with you. So fill out that connection card so we can get to know you. Yeah, we want to know you and we want to live in community with you. Well, we have a few big things to let you know of today. First of all, you've probably heard us talk about it over the last couple weeks, but we have this next year, 2023, it's coming so fast. And it's going to be what we've called the year of the Bible. Uh, Pastor Brian's going to address it more in just a few minutes. Uh, But I just wanted to let you know that as the online campus family, we are going to be in to be able to engage in all the ways that uh, people here in person will be able to. And so I just want to let you know of a couple of things that I'm particularly excited about. First of all, we're going to be doing a Bible reading plan as a church. uh, That'll be throughout the the whole year. We'll cover the whole Bible. We'll be releasing more information on that and be uh, releasing that to you at the very beginning of 2023. So keep an eye out for that. And secondly, we're also going to be doing Bible engagement small groups, and they're going to be so good. Yeah. We're going to go deep into some biblical uh, uh, doctrine and material, and I'm really excited yeah. for that. So keep an eye out for both of those. Just wanted to let you know that they're coming up soon. Yeah, next year's going to be such a great year. Yeah. I'm so excited for all of these things that we're doing, all of the new ways that we want to get into the Bible and get into the Word and yeah. discover God more. It's, it's going to be awesome. Be, it's going to be so, so good. Yeah. We can't wait. No. I'm so excited. But for this year, Uh we have Christmas coming up. Let's go. And we have our Christmas Eve services. Yes. So we will be streaming those online for our online campus. It's going to be so good. They're going to be at 11, Mm -hmm. 1230, 315, and 430. Okay. So at all of those times, you can join in with with our Christmas Eve service. It's going to be so special, so, so good. Yes, it will be. Yes, it will be. It'll be a great day. So make sure you're joining us online for that. Also wanted to let you know, on New Year's Day, we'll be just having one service at 1130. So make sure you're back in, tuning in for that. That's going to be a great service as well. Well, today, right now, we're going to transition into this special moment of worship that I believe is really going to prepare our hearts for the remainder of service. Let's go back into worship together today.
Let me welcome all of our campuses live into this moment uh, today. Thank you all for being here. Those of you here in Saxe, uh, those of you that are joining us in Garland and Wiley and in uh, our Hughes campus, we thank you for being a part of this celebration. Look, before we do anything else today, uh, let me make you aware of something that's on my heart coming into the new year. Um, I just sensed a few weeks ago, months ago, actually, the Lord really burdened my heart to lead us on a journey of engaging the Bible in a new way and a more committed way. 
Uh, There's so much uh, that I'm going to be sharing with you coming into the new year, but I've been talking to our youth and our young adults and services that I've been with them about how much our lives change when we're in the Scripture multiple times a week. There's been study after study that has showed the profound impact that engaging the Bible has on our anxiety, our stress levels, our feelings of loneliness. All those things are impacted tremendously when we engage the Word of God. We call it the Word of Life for a reason. And so I want us to take a journey as a church, and we're going to call it the unfolding. You're going to hear a lot about the unfolding because it is the unfolding revelation of God. And the more you get in His Word, the more you understand Him. I heard somebody the other day from our church actually overheard them say they were perplexed and they just said, I just kind of wish Jesus would come in and sit down with me in the morning when I had my coffee and tell me what to do. And I said, well, hello, he did. He's, it's his, he is the Word. And when you read the Word, you're, you're learning from Christ himself. And so uh, it's just a matter of us coming to a place we understand it in a new and a fresh way. And we're going to help you do that. If you don't already have a dedicated reading plan for the year, we're going to be providing a website and resources for you, a reading plan that will start on January the 1st, um, and it will kind of coincide with what I'll be preaching throughout the year. And if we keep pace together, then there's going to be a lot of connection. Small groups are going to be working together with that. And as I said, I'm going to be bringing in some uh, very uh, uh, well-known scholars and thinkers to help us throughout the year engage the Word of God in a brand new, different way. So I just want you to let your hearts be expectant, be looking forward to that. We launch our fast, uh, which we're going to start at January the 9th. It's a Monday prayer and fasting, and we'll be having special times each Wednesday night here. Normally we do those in the mornings, but we're going to move them to Wednesday nights in this particular year. Um, And we're going to have our prayer times on Wednesday evenings for three Wednesday evenings during that fast. Also want you to be mindful of that. Now locally, we made each campus aware a moment ago of our Christmas Eve service times at that campus. But I do want you to know, you guys did an incredible job last week. You almost wiped us out of these cards. So we had more printed. These are packets for you to take with you when you leave the building uh, today. Uh, Please take more of these with you. Uh, They have a lot of information about our online Christmas special, about all of our Christmas Eve services. And I just have this rich expectation in my heart that God is going to meet us in a miraculous way on Christmas Eve. As an act of obedience, I'm going to pause the service in every service and make space for God to do miraculous things. It's Christmas time. We ought to believe for miracles. And so I, I, I've been telling people, bring your family, your friends, your faith, and your biggest needs, and let's trust God to enflesh himself in our lives and in our needs. And so take these and make use of them in the coming days and invite people to our Christmas Eve services that are right around the corner. I do want to update you um, and just kind of make sure um, you're aware, those of you that are guests, just let me catch you up a little bit. We have adopted, we always adopt a compassion initiative uh, for Christmas. We make it kind of our Christmas outreach, and we have bought uh, water wells, dug water wells, mosquito nets, water filtration systems. We have uh, done one day to feed the world, taken a day's wage to help enroll children in feeding programs and schools around the world, and we'll keep doing all of that in the years to come. But we just sense the Lord ask us, If this is a season when the Word becomes flesh and we're going to engage the Word in a way we never have and in a more intentional, committed journey than ever next year, then let's let Christmas, this Christmas, let's give the Word away. And so we've been doing that. We have an opportunity with one of our missions partners, One Hope, who has been on the ground in the Democratic Republic of Congo for years. And um, they, they have an open door through the president of the Congo to run a discipleship program during the school day in the DRC next year. And so we have committed to come alongside One Hope, put a Bible in the hands of kids and enroll them in that six week journey. And because of the infrastructure and materials they already have in in country on site, we are able to to take three kids through that journey for one dollar. You saw these on your seats when you came in. Um, and we, it's a lot of leverage for a little bit of investment. And so 
our goal was to take 300,000 kids through the journey, which was $100,000, which is what we committed to One Hope to do. But just so you know, these are not just numbers. Let me just give you the face and story of one young man. Uh, I think some images of Josue are going to play behind me, but Josue is a young Congolese um, a student in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, one hope, one of the ways they reach the country is they have a video called the God Man video. It's about Jesus, kind of like the Jesus film. And they show it in public places. And Josue was invited to one of those viewings of the God Man movie. And in that viewing, he gave his life to Jesus. The problem was his family was Muslim. And so after he started connecting with some of the One Hope staff, uh, he went home wanted told his family about what had happened and uh, he was kicked out of his home Um, he really had nowhere to go after that so he went and knocked on the door of the one hope representative that one hope representative brought Josue into his home and let him live there he started discipling Josue and um, you can begin to see the transformation in Josue's life as he grows in his faith And as you watch the B-roll here in the video, you're going to realize as you see Josue up in front of a classroom that now this guy that's grown in his faith is one of the facilitators. He is one of the people who will be leading these six-week journeys in the school systems of the Congo, teaching kids and helping us disciple kids. He's one of the many thousands of people that will be teaching this Bible class. So it's not just numbers It's people and names and real life change. So we committed to 100,000. Privately, I was praying, God, what if we could impact a million kids? There's 40 million uh, students under the age of 18 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, What if we could touch a million of them? We committed to 300,000. So as of right now, let me just kind of show you where we are. We checked last night. We've updated our graph just to kind of show you where we are right now. And as of last night... You guys had already given $120,000, $120,000. So we've blown past our commitment, $20,000 extra, which means we've already sponsored 360,000 students. So we've got half of December left, all right? So our next goal, if we get to $167,000, that's 47 more thousand dollars, we will have sponsored half a million students. And I believe we can do that. I believe that is very possible. 47 more thousand dollars between now and the end of the year. And we've already shattered our goal. So let's just keep being extravagantly generous in our heart towards covering the earth with the glory of God. Let me just say thank you. Thank you in advance for what you're doing. For We literally have the chance to shape an entire nation. This president has 18 months left on his term. And if he's not reelected, this door is going to shut. This window of opportunity in history may never come around again. And we're going to have a chance to literally shape the face of a nation for the glory of God. And I want to say thank you for being a part of that. The ways to give are on your screen. The link the, the, for the Congo, the QR code will take you specifically how to designate gifts to that. But your normal giving, uh, this could be the most generous year in the history of our church. And we want to ask you to keep being faithful in your normal giving, your tithe, your offering. Thank you for your faithfulness to the house of God. Father... I want you to open our hearts today to your word and thank you for the generous hearts of this congregation that have already in just the first couple weeks of this year have just been incredibly generous. I think what was in my heart weeks and months ago when you opened up this door, God, it is in, it has been contagious in their hearts as well and that has been proven by the generosity thus far and I just ask, Lord, do you shower your covenant blessings upon your people uh, as they honor you to make your name famous in the world. I pray, God, that you'll help me communicate your truth today, your heart, as it relates to the Christmas story. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Several weeks ago, at the beginning of our Advent series, I introduced you to two words used in theological circles very often but they are rarely used anywhere else. And I promised you then that if you could fully grasp the depth of those two words and how those words describe God, then Christmas would mean more to you than it ever has before. 
These two words are the essence of the Christmas story. Transcendence and imminence. The transcendence of God means that God is outside of humanity's full experience, perception, or grasp. He transcends us. He's bigger than us. The imminence of God means that He is knowable and perceivable or graspable. That He reveals Himself to us. He comes close to us. That His presence is near or imminent. So Christmas is the story of this transcendent God becoming one of us. It's the story of the divine becoming human, of deity robing himself in human flesh. Because of that, our attention over the next few days is going to be fixed on a baby in a manger. The nativity will capture our focus, and it should. But listen, we will never comprehend the magnitude of God becoming flesh if we don't stop and try to comprehend the magnitude of what it means for God to be God. And that's why we spent the first week of Advent focusing on God's transcendence, His sheer size and magnitude. And when you start trying to understand the majesty of God, and then you think about the incarnation, it is the equivalent of trying to fit the ocean in a thimble. It's impossible. And yet, on a starry night in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, that's exactly what happened. The transcendent God became an imminent God. He came close. He became intimate and personal. He drew near. And when you understand these two seemingly opposite aspects of God's nature, scriptures start to come alive. Passages like Psalm 46, come into clear focus. I want us to look at that well-known psalm one more time this Advent season. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. And these two words, alongside transcendence and imminence, ever-present, have captured our attention this month because they reveal both aspects of God's nature and they reveal the essence of the Christmas story. Ever is God's eternal, forever, everlasting, transcendent nature. Present means His personal, close, intimate presence, His imminent nature. That ever-present God has come to help us in our trouble. That's what the psalmist says. And that reality is the foundational underlying promise of Christmas. It's why there is a baby and a manger and God robed himself in human flesh so he could be our ever-present help in trouble. We've already focused on the ever part of God's nature. So today on this Sunday before Christmas, I want us to see what it means for God to truly be present with us. And to do that, I don't want to go to Luke 1 or Matthew 2 or the commonly read stories about Christmas. I I want us to go all the way back to the beginning because Christmas isn't the beginning of the story. Christmas is the crescendo of the story. So to fully understand Christmas, you have to see where Christmas fits into the whole story. Have you ever gone to see a movie that had such an explosive action-packed beginning and the concession line was so long that you missed the beginning of the movie and then none of the rest of the movie made sense because the beginning was necessary to understand the whole. Well, that's the case here. God's story opens up with this intense, action-packed beginning and if you miss it or if you misunderstand it, you're going to miss the purpose of the rest of God's story and then you'll end up missing the real meaning of Christmas. In the very beginning, as God is creating, He places His prized creation, Adam and Eve, in the perfect place, the Garden of Eden. And He has this perfect scenario that His heart has been longing for. He wants a close, personal relationship with these two people so that He can love them without restraint. But Adam and Eve shatter the heart of God, and they shatter the original plan of God with their sin and their disobedience. Listen to what Genesis 3, 8 says. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of God. This is after they had sinned. They heard 
the sound of God, the Lord God, as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. Now, believe it or not, that phrase, the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, is crucial to you understanding all of God's story, but especially the Christmas story. I know when you think about Christmas, you're normally not thinking about the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3.8 and God walking in the garden looking for Adam and Eve. But here in the very beginning, with God's heart now crushed by their disobedience, you have to notice this, God doesn't run from them. He doesn't disown them. He pursues them. He created them and he created this beautiful place simply because he wanted to be with them. And even now, in their rebellion, he chases them. This desire to be with them was so strong in his heart that even when we blew it, he chased us. He pursued us. He longed for us. So he's walking in the cool of the the day in the garden looking and longing and chasing and pursuing a relationship with Adam and Eve. Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. This whole scene reveals the heart behind the entire storyline of the Bible and it reveals the heart behind why there is a Christmas. All you need to hear is this, but all of us need to know it, but some of us need to hear this more than anything else. The grand vision of God, His supreme passion, the whole point of His story from beginning to end is to be with you. That's all He wants. He wants to hang out with us. He he wants to walk with us. He wants to dwell with us. He wants relationship with us. And you need to let that soak in. Because there are some of us that have walked our whole life with this view that God is some angry, distant, cosmic being waiting for us to make a mistake so that He can zap us. Or others of us feel forgotten by God or some of us feel like He just doesn't care. But the opening pages of the Bible uncover something totally different than that. They uncover something about the heart of God that drives the narrative of the rest of the Bible. And that narrative is this. There is not a chance that He has forgotten you. There is not a chance that He has overlooked you. There is not a chance that He has lost His desire to be with you. Being with you is the driving passion of his heart. It's the whole point of creation. It's the whole point of Christmas because God wants to be with us. From the time Adam and Eve blew it up to this very moment, the whole story of the Bible is screaming out to us the heart of God. God is saying, I will pursue you to the ends of the earth to get you back. If it means I must take on the form of a baby, in the womb of a virgin peasant girl or become a bloody, beaten, suffering Savior and die an unjust death on the cross. I will do whatever I have to do to be in relationship with you. As you follow the narrative of the story, after Adam and Eve fail God, the world gets even more wicked. It seems like the more God pursues us, the faster we run away from Him. In Genesis 6, verse 5, it says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Now the very next verse is verse 6. Listen carefully to this. The Lord regretted that He had made human beings on the earth and His heart was deeply troubled. So if you read to Genesis 6, 6, and if you were to just put down your Bible and walk away right there and never read anything else, you would come to the conclusion right here that God's heart had been so broken by us that He had given up on us. But if you don't quit reading, you'll discover that God is so committed to be with us that His pursuit of us will not be stopped. Even though we keep breaking His heart, He is committed to get our hearts back. But how? How is he going to undo the impact of sin on the human race? Well, his first plan was to start all over. 
So he says, let me pick the best guy I've got, the one that loves me more than anybody else on the earth, and I'll start over with him. There's one guy on the whole planet that wants to be in relationship with me, even though he has a sin nature. And so I want to start with him and his family and see if we can't get this right the second time. And that's the story of Noah. Verse 7 of Genesis 6 said, The Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. It's one of the most common stories in the Bible. Kids know it. But the focus today is not on the flood or the massive boat or the animals and two by two and all that were saved. It's the fact that God started over with the most righteous man left on the earth and it didn't work. Sometime after the flood is over, Noah gets off the ark and he grossly sins against God. He breaks the heart of God just like Adam and Eve. When Noah got off the boat, his sin nature got off with him. And all these years later, since the garden, nothing has changed. And it shows us that if God is really going to be with us, if he is really going to dwell with us, the plan can never depend on our ability to be good enough because we just keep failing him. There's going to have to be some action on his part to get us back because we can't be good enough in our own merit to make this work. So every page of the Bible... From Genesis 6 to the end of the book of Revelation, you see this passionate love of God chasing after us. We keep breaking promises, and He keeps keeping promises in spite of us. Because the driving passion of His heart is you. He wants to be in relationship with you, and nothing else matters more to Him than that. Look at the pattern throughout Scripture. When you study the early pages of the Bible, there's no temple, there's no church in the Garden of Eden. God's presence is so real, it's so intimate that there was no building or church or cathedral that could house His presence. There was no need for a dedicated place to be set aside to meet with God because His presence permeated the entire place in a very tangible way. But later on, as you go through the Old Testament, as God's people are nomadically wandering in the desert, God instructs His people to build this mobile tabernacle and set it up everywhere they go. Because man is so sinful and God is so holy, there is a separation in relationship. And there is no permanent answer at this point to the sin problem that separates God and man. But God is so passionate about being with us that He wants this tabernacle to be a place that He can come and visit. So He would come and fill that place with His presence. He would dwell there on rare occasions and only after strict adherence to a long list of rules on a certain day of the year, a privileged few could come into God's presence in their tabernacle. Now, it wasn't the way He wanted it, But it was the only way he could be with them in their sinfulness. When the people settled and found a permanent home, the tabernacle was replaced by a permanent temple. But the same limitations existed. Only a certain few on select days after going through stringent purification processes could experience the presence of God. His presence was real But it was very limited to a few people who had limited access to him. It's not what he wanted. But it continues to reveal his heart to be with us. He's trying to make a way to be with us. Now fast forward to Christmas. Remember that Old Testament tabernacle and temple were only temporary. They were the limited ways that God could dwell with man until he could do what he ultimately longed to do. And listen what the Apostle John says about the arrival of Jesus. John 1.14, the Word, a reference to Jesus, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. That phrase, the Word, made His dwelling among us. That word in English, dwelling, comes from John's original language. Literally, in the Greek, it translates 
Jesus, the Word, tabernacled among us. It's tabernacle imagery and it is powerful imagery and John uses it on purpose because he's trying to point the reader back to what God has been doing the whole time throughout history. He's been chasing us. Like he chased Adam and Eve in the garden. Like he chased his people with the tabernacle and chased them with the temple. John is saying the presence of God that walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. The presence of God that filled the mobile tabernacle in the wilderness. And then the permanent temple of Solomon is now among men. The presence that tabernacled or dwelt with Moses is now tabernacling or dwelling among men in the person of Jesus Christ. Divinity has now clothed himself in human flesh. Through Jesus, God has become one of us that he might truly be with us. The transcendent has become imminent. The ever has come present. John 1.14 in the New Living Translation says, So the word Jesus became human and made his home among us. And that word home, that imagery of God being at home with us, at Christmas is very important because home is what God had in mind in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. That was home. The unfiltered, unadulterated presence of God permeating our whole being. God's home is with His people. And that's what you read in the very end of the Bible when you get to the book of Revelation. What sin destroyed in the book of Genesis is completely restored when you get to the end of the Bible at the book of Revelation. So the Bible opens with fellowship with God being interrupted and the Bible ends with it forever being restored in eternity. God at home with His people and His people eternally at home with Him. Up until the birth of Jesus, God being with His people was limited and it was inconsistent and it was sporadic and it almost felt temporary It seems like every time you see God's people in His presence, it was more like a visitation. And that might sound good, but it's not what God had in mind. It's not what God's heart ultimately longed for. He wanted more than a visit, and we need more than a visit. We need Him to be here. We need Him to stay. We need Him to dwell. We need Him to permanently, once and for all, be with us. Our hearts long for an ever-present God, which means a visitation will not satisfy God's heart or ours. What we need is a habitation. From Eden until now, God's original desire was never to simply visit with us. His desire was to dwell with us. And when Jesus was born... The transcendent God of the universe made His most passionate and loving commitment yet to pursue us. He laid aside the riches and the splendor and the glory of heaven to be placed in an animal's food trough in a barn because He was finished with visitations and He wanted a habitation. Listen, the incarnation is the bridge between visitation and habitation. Christmas is when God in the flesh took up residence with us. There is a reason. The reason there is a Christmas is the same reason there was a Garden of Eden. God wanted to be with us. The reason there is a Christmas is the same reason there was a tabernacle. God wanted to be with us. The reason there is a Christmas is the same reason there was a temple. God wanted to be with us. He is chasing us. But the garden and the tabernacle and the temple, all of that was temporary. And he did not want a temporary visit. He wanted to dwell. So Christmas is the pinnacle, the crescendo, the denouement of God's story. What he longed for in the garden with Adam and Eve can now be experienced by all of us because Christ has come. Christmas is literally the closing scene in an epic chase of God pursuing a relationship with man. The baby in a manger, the nativity, is God crying from the depths of his heart, I am here. I have come. 
I am present in the world. I am in this room. I am in your life. I am in your story. I have come to dwell in your hearts. The very purpose of Christmas was to make the impossible possible. God poured the ocean into a thimble. The Word became flesh. The timeless became timely. The unapproachable became approachable. The incomprehensible became comprehensible. The infinite became intimate. The immortal became mortal. The distant became close. The transcendent became imminent. The ever became present. It is the crescendo of his story. It is what his heart longs for. He wants to be present with us. Christmas is the story of God chasing after us because there is nothing the heart of God wants more than a relationship with you. The Apostle Paul knew the heart of God and his longing to be, to dwell with his people. And while what I'm about to read to you is the closing prayer of the book of Ephesians, it is in essence a Christmas prayer. Paul prays what is now possible for all of us today because of Christmas. He says in Ephesians 3.14, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources that He is transcendent, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home, eminent God, in your hearts as you trust in Him, that Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Now because of Christmas, what we lost in Eden can be found in Christ. He's chasing after you this Christmas. He wants a relationship with you this Christmas. The question is, are you going to keep running and excusing and delaying or are you going to surrender your heart what your heart and what his heart ultimately longs for will you let him dwell in you we're going to do a couple things to close this advent service today very unique for advent Um, but before we do that i think it's very imperative right now across our campuses those of you watching online here in Saxe, that we just pause for a moment. If the whole storyline of the Bible from Genesis 1-1 to the last verse of Revelation 22 with this crescendo at Christmas is the revelation of God's heart to be with you. And if he's not with you today in the way that he wants to be, it's not his fault. And I don't know what you blame or what excuses you have today, but let me just challenge you to Remove those excuses. He's chasing you. He's pursuing you. He's not going to leave you alone. And there's no better day than today, right now, just to stop running from God and surrender your life to Him and let Him overtake you. So I'm going to pray a simple prayer really quick before we move on in the service today. Wherever you're watching from online or wherever you're seated in this building today, This prayer has the power to transform your life like a simple prayer like this did mine 30 plus years ago. And I'm going to just challenge you to surrender your life to Jesus today. So Father, on this Sunday, right before Christmas, we we confess to you we need you. Our hearts ache because of the empty place that is there, the lack of your residence. (laughs) We have known you and We have felt you, but it's been more visitations and religious routine. But today, God, we want you to take up residence in our life. We don't want more religion. We want you. And so, Lord, we too are tired of visitations. We're ready for a habitation. So will you make Christmas real to my heart this year? And may the nativity, what God did in the flesh in that story, May you really be enfleshed in my life. Will you come live in me? Forgive me of my sin, Lord. Will you cleanse me of my my wrong? Would you be Lord of everything in my life? I fully and completely and wholly surrender my life to you today. I give you every day 
of the rest of my life. Lord Jesus, I am yours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now here's what I want us to do today. I think it's a beautiful opportunity for us to celebrate communion. Uh, these were available to you when you came in the door. We have some folks throughout the sanctuary today that are going to serve you if by chance you got in the building and didn't get these and you would like elements today and you want to receive communion with us, please get their attention when they come by you and get these elements from them. And as they make their way throughout the building to serve you today, let me just explain a couple things. First of all, we practice an open communion, which means you don't have to be a member of North Place Church. All we ask is that you be a follower of Jesus Christ, which means if you surrendered your life to Jesus about 90 seconds ago, you are as saved as I am. That's the power of grace. The beauty of His righteousness, you are as clean and as righteous as Christ. The minute you say amen on that prayer, as somebody that has served Him for 30 years, which means it would be one of the most powerful things you could do this Christmas to let the moment after you pray that prayer to take the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and number yourself with the family of faith. So please take one of these when they come by if you haven't already. Can I say this to you before we take these elements? There is nothing we could do as a church today that symbolizes the ever-present God more than this. The Word became flesh. He's present with us today. Emmanuel, this is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. This symbolizes His body. He came and robed Himself in human flesh because He wanted to have empathy for what you went through. He wanted to be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. Know what it was like to cry your tears. Know what it was like to feel your pain. And He does. He can identify with that. And today, I believe He wants to come close to you as you receive this today. So Lord, I pray over the bread today that as the church comes to your table, that they would sense the present of an ever-present God today, that Emmanuel would be with every broken heart, that, that every grieving heart, every anxious heart, every lonely heart would sense the embrace of a loving God coming close to them today that it wouldn't be some intellectual idea, but it would be something real and tangible in their life. As we take the bread, may we sense that God has come to dwell with me, not, not just us, not just the church, but with me today. You are near, you are accessible, you are approachable today. That's what this bread symbolizes. And today I thank you for it. And I pray that everything that is promised to us through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ would belong to us as your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you take the bread together today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, I pray over this cup. It's one thing for you to have empathy about our situation, but if you remain powerless to do anything about it, that wouldn't be that good. We can be empathetic with each other, but not have power to change it. But to know there is a God that has empathy for us, He understands us, His heart breaks with ours, and yet this cup that is a symbol of your shed blood that said you died, it also reminds us that you rose again. That there is power, not just empathy, but power to change the situation. So Lord, as we hold this cup that tells us to look back and remember your death until you come again, it reminds us to also look forward to your coming. But in between, we hold this cup as a reminder of your power to break into our lives. Thank you for your empathy. But Lord, we also want to thank you for the wonder-working power that is in the blood of the Lamb to bring about change in our circumstances, and our situations. And we don't have to wait till Christmas Eve to believe for a miracle. We ask for it today. In the sacred moment of a communion service, would you heal and restore from our emotions to our physical bodies to our relationships? Would you deliver and wash and set us free today? through the power of the blood of Christ. 
may everything that is available to us through the shed blood of Jesus Christ be ours as we take this cup. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you take the cup together today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I want to want to move to the lighting of the candles today and I want you to follow me okay I want you to notice the symbolism and the uniqueness of this moment and I'm bringing my notes with me because I want to read a passage to you after I light these candles notice what we're doing all right as we light the candles we lit the hope candle first and if you'll notice the color in the way we light them we're going dark 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 then last week we lit the peace candle We're going to light dark candles, the purple candles, all the way as we approach. It's dark, dark, dark. And then on Christmas Eve, we're going to light the two lightest candles, the joy candle and the Christ candle, because it's dark, dark, dark. Boom, a light has dawned. Joy has come. So we've lit lit the hope candle and the peace candle. I'm about to light the love candle. But let me read a passage to you. Paul writes in Titus, Chapter 3, verse 5, He came to save us. Not because of any virtuous deed that we have done, but only because of His extravagant mercy. He saved us, resurrecting us through the washing of rebirth. We were made completely new by the Holy Spirit, whom He splashed over us richly by Jesus, the Messiah, our life giver. So as a gift of His love, That's what we're here to celebrate. And since we are faultless and innocent before His face because of the righteousness of Christ, we we can now become heirs of all things all because of an overflowing hope of eternal life. How true and faithful is this message. And today we light the love candle. It's been dark, dark, dark. But a new light is about to dawn. We're going to celebrate the inbreaking of God into our world. Would you stand with me all across this place today? And I'm going to ask the prayer teams at all of our campuses if they would make themselves available here in Saxe, Wiley, Garland to serve you today. And listen, if you um, if you surrendered your life to Jesus today, obviously we'd love to pray for you at the front of the building to seal in your heart what the Holy Spirit has done in your life. But I would love for you at any campus to stop by our Guest Connect area or our Next next Step areas because we specifically made an ornament for you for Christmas. It's a beautiful ornament for people that have committed their lives to Christ during this season because we want you to have something to look back on a line of demarcation in your life. That is the day I went all in for Jesus. There's a lot of other resources we'd love to put in your hands, but stop by Next Steps or Guest Connect and let them know, hey, I surrendered my life when Pastor prayed that prayer today, and they'll resource you before you walk out of this place. If you have need in your life today, don't leave this place. There is something stirring in the atmosphere. It's time for a Christmas miracle. Listen, I'm going to say this on Christmas Eve. Oh, but Pastor, it's too big. Look. For God to become human is like pouring an ocean into a thimble, and He did it. If we're going to nod our head and believe that a virgin girl can give birth to God, then we ought to believe that God can be actively involved in our lives. And I believe He can answer prayer today for your needs. So, Father, would You move on our hearts today? Would You increase our faith today? And would You heal us and Give hope to us and restore us today. Will you bless them and keep them and make your face to shine down upon them? Would you be gracious to them and turn your countenance their direction today, Lord? Would you give us Advent hope, Advent peace, and Advent love? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. These altars are open today. Merry Christmas. Amen. Well, I hope today's message encouraged and challenged you. And I know for me, one of my biggest takeaways was that passage in John where, where it says that God made his home 
among us. It, I think it speaks to the fact of how much God loves us and how he pursues us and how he literally wanted to be so near to us that he made his home among us. And so I hope that challenged and encouraged you today. And as you go throughout the rest of this Christmas season, I want you to remember that God chose to be near to you and he broke into time. He, he was born as a baby. He didn't consider himself uh, above that. He came near to us and that's what the Christmas story is all about. And so I, I just want to challenge you to remember that over these next few days. Well, I also wanted to just remind you about our Christmas Eve times. We'll be streaming our services this Christmas Eve starting at 11, 15, uh, 12, 30. Excuse me. Make, I'm going to get these right. 11, 12, 30, 3, 15, and 4, 30. Sorry about that. Uh, well, we thank you so much for being with us today. I can't wait to see you on our Christmas Eve right here for our services then.